today's episode, we're diving headfirst into the elephant in the room. What on earth is happening at Manchester United this season? Is it tactical turmoil, a crisis of confidence, or just bad ownership? So grab your favorite brew, settle in, and join us as we attempt to unravel the mystery behind the struggles of one of football's powerhouses. I'm Redbeard, joined by my all-time partner in crime, Targo. How's it going, guys? This is an all-new episode of Bruise and Banter FC, and it starts right now. How's it going, man? What's up, man? Good. How are, how are you? I'm doing fan freaking tastic. What are you drinking? More importantly, I'm drinking Snow Gaze, the new Snow cold Gaze. IPA from No Lie. Just came out this week. Very excited. And how is it? Give us a taste. You know, it's very smooth for an IPA, but it's it's very hoppy. Like, very, very <laughs> hoppy. Yeah. Yeah. You can keep uh, that I one, would, then. Uh, yeah, six out of ten, probably. Maybe six, six and okay. a half. Yeah. It's very hoppy. Very It's light for an IPA, so I think it's good. 6.5%. I was just about to ask you that. You read my mind. Yeah. What do you well, drink? I got Dr- Drew Brew, Hefeweizen. Hey, straight out of Yakima. Straight out of Yakima. So I did have a sip as I was pouring. I may have poured a little too quickly and <laughs> had a little foam come come out of the mug. But I'll like give it another sip that's not foam. I like that. Yeah. I've had that one before. It's, it's light, very, but it's got good flavor. Good. Yeah, it's very good. I feel like with hefs, man, they can either be hit or miss, too. Yeah, I think it all depends on how much hops get used. Because, like, Widmer's is not very good. Oh, I love uh, Widmer's. Pyramids. Remember that? Pyramids, Hefeweizen. I think I like both of those. Yeah, Pyramids was delicious. Drew Brews little, is great. A little slice of lemon. Mm. Yep, right at the end. Mm-mm. Pick it up a notch. I'd give this a solid eight. Yeah. Too bad you don't have a slice of lemon to put in there. It'd be all I fancy. I am not fancy. <laughs> I am not fancy. Let's talk about Man United since we're on the subject. What is going on with Manchester United, man? I mean, for us Arsenal fans, it's kind of fun to watch. But if I was a United supporter, I would be so sick and tired of just watching this team the ownership, the management, the players, I mean, all of it. The The recruiting. I would be mad at the recruiting, man. The club right now is rotten. I know know we've both seen Stranger Things, but you remember the the first season when, like, the pumpkins rot? And, like, half of the pumpkin's still there, but the rest of it's rotted? That is Manchester United right now. I think that's season two, but... Okay, maybe it is season two. <laughs> I should know. I'm watching it currently for like the eighth time. So maybe I should get that right. But you are right. Uh, anyways, they've lost eight of 15 games in all competition this season. That's more than 50% of their matches. Well, let's it's take insane. a look at that, man. We'll start from the top to the bottom. Although I, when I say top to the bottom, for some reason, I think of a pyramid. I don't yeah. think this is like a pyramid situation, though. I think this is a full circle, man. I think this is more like a full circle where it all comes back around. You know, you have the ownership, the management, the players, and it just kind of all goes back. It's a vicious cycle. Yes. It's a vicious cycle. That is football. So let's start with the ownership, though. It's the Glazers. What What's going on with the Glazers, man? They're, once they're in debt, are they yeah. going to be bought? Are they not going to be bought? Yeah, I mean... Or I guess sold every- and then bought? Every time any sort of like takeover talks of any sort come around, it's like they're tiptoeing around the situation. Like, oh, I don't know. Maybe it's a good deal. Maybe we should take it. 
or I don't know, maybe we should rethink it. Let's restructure it. I don't know. Wishy-washy. It's all wishy-washy, yeah, man. Very. You're They're over a billion do- pounds in debt. I mean, they're rumored to be selling 25% to Jim Ratcliffe, but that was like two weeks ago for $1.3 billion. Is it ever going to happen? Like, I know these I things think take it time, will. but... It, I, I think it needs to happen, honestly, because there's talks 100%. about... You know, previous podcasts you guys should check out. We talked about the whole Jim Ratcliffe situation and how we think he will shake things up there and become the new... What's what's the word I'm looking for? Like the sport, not sporting director, but he's going to take new over. Director of football operations. Yeah, yeah football yeah. operations. He's going to take over the football operations away from the Glazers, which I do think is a step in the right direction if that happens. Yeah. Because honestly, it can't get any worse. And, you know, I've I've heard the argument, okay, past the Jim Ratcliffe part, that the Glazers don't spend money. Yes, they do. Uh, because since Sir Alex's retirement, they've spent one point one over one point one billion pounds on sixty players since two thousand thirteen. City net spend, that is a net spend, by the way. City's net spend is um seven hundred and thirty two million over the same time period. And people say, Oh, City spend all this money on players. Well United have spent pretty close to double that with net spend. I mean, without it, I think they're like two hundred million off. Where City spent one point two billion, some one point one something billion. Anyways, but just look at the players that City has bought versus United. Honestly, just look at this year, man. Who did City bring in? They brought in Jeremy Doku, Josko Gavardio, and Mateo Kovacic. Mateo Kovacic. They look like fantastic. Well, I, I would say him. Kovacic, Kovacic but... I think, is more of a bench player again, <clears> but. Doku and Vardio looks Vardio. like a defender, and Doku, as you say, is lightning in a bottle, man. Yeah, it's like kissing the spark plug. Let's see, who who did United bring in? They spent how much on Andre Onana? Was it 50, 45 mil? You know how much Spurs spent on Vicario? 13 mil, if I'm not mistaken. 16, yeah. 16. So, I mean, okay. Onana will give them a pass. He had a fantastic last year. Okay, so then they went and bought Rashmus Hoyland. How much did they spend on him? Was it 60, 60 mil? 80 something mil? Something like that. There? I think it was 80. On a young, unproven striker. I will say he Which, does look like a talent. He, he does look like, like their a best promising signing. talent, but not what they need right now. They got Mason Mount from Chelsea for, six, for 60 million. 60 mil. Where does he play? Who knows? Where he is playing now isn't working. Or what his role is in that team isn't working. Unknown, actually. <laughs> yeah. They and then got uh Sofiane Amrabat on loan. I think he's on loan, along yeah. with Regulon on, on yeah, loan. On loan. And Johnny Evans on a free. So they spent all that money on those players. Yeah. It's just again bad recruitment, Re- man. Bad recruitment. Yeah, it goes back to those Terrible. football operations, right? And you know, as as Arsenal fans, right? We went through this too. We did a couple of years ago under Unai Emery and start of Mikel Arteta's reign. Lots of dead wood in the dressing room. Players having off field issues. High coaching, wages. High wages. Coaching looks tactically inept because of it. Ownership group that pays no attention to supporters and won't invest in the squad, staff, and facilities. Well, the difference is, is Arsenal hired Edu and Arteta, cut their losses, let players go for free or for minimal fees, canceled their contracts. After the whole Super League debacle, Josh Kroenke took the reins, more hands-on approach put trust in the staff and hired for the future of the team as a sporting project. So again, full circle, right? What has United done? They've not done anything but send absurd amounts of money for players. Most of them that are the problem player wise still there and they're not refreshing the squad. The Glazers currently in charge of the sporting aspect of the club 
but one would argue they know nothing about football. John Murtaugh, I mean, can... go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, I want to talk a little bit about that. So you can even go back to the CEO and the director of football. You know, we mentioned this during that Jim Ratcliffe episode. Where those play those the people in those positions, you know, they're obviously in charge of finding the manager. Things like that. Well, with the sale or no sale, they don't know if they're going to have jobs. I mean, if Ratcliffe comes in, I don't think they will. No, and currently so, their director of football is John Murtaugh, and Sir and Jim so Ratcliffe wants to appoint Paul Mitchell, so he would be. And so they're at a standstill because they can't even they can't even fire Ten Hog if they wanted. No, it would cost them fifteen mil to cancel his contract. But then who would one? Who would they find? <laughs> who would want to come to Manchester United? <laughs> yeah, is a not not question. only that, but like, you'd have to again. These people they're they're worried about their jobs. They're not worried about the job Ten Hog's doing. If I'm being honest. Yeah, hundred percent. So it goes. I'm, it goes back to that. Yeah, it does. And you know, if Surgeon Ratcliffe does appoint Paul Mitchell, uh, you probably will know him from formerly being at Spurs with Pochettino, and then RB Leipzig during that era where they signed a ton of young talent that turned into be superstars. He's currently at AS Monaco. So they so have a direct. Go ahead. To compare Man United, I know you compared him to Arsenal, but you could also compare him to Chelsea, to Spurs. Yeah. You know, teams like that. Spurs brought in a new manager, and I think it's it's paying dividends, obviously, when you can find that right manager. Yes. I also think that could be an issue with this team, you know, as we keep going down around the circle, shall we say. <laughs> you get to the manager, and... I don't know, man. What's going on with Ten Hag? Because last season, like, how could they have a, such a big drop off? I guess is what I'm saying from last season to this season. Winning Carabao Cup, finishing third, putting good performances together, to this year just being not having any identity on the pitch for one. Players looking like they don't give a shit. Really, they 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 don't. I'll be honest with you. Um... I mean, I mean it, Ten Hag kind of could, play, having weird tactics. Like, in, I mean, you posted a video on the TikTok about some of his quotes. So, I mean, again, you guys should be checking out our TikTok, Instagram, <laughs> Facebook group. But yeah, let, let's start there with the tactics, right? Like, he's playing right footed center back at left back against Man City, he plays Johnny Evans instead of Rafael Varane, Harry Maguire at center back as well. He's got a left back and a World Cup winning center back on the bench. His subs make no sense. And he recently said that this United team can't play like Ajax because it has different players. But then why did he buy three of his former players? Oh, Nana, Lissandro Martinez, and Anthony. Yeah. Yeah, it's... You know, I guess the only kind of leeway I can give him is that defense has been injured. He has, yeah, that Man United team has suffered quite has suffered quite a few injuries. Yeah, and so I I can understand if that hinders the way you want to play. But then even some of these signings, man. I mean, Casemiro this year he looks like he doesn't have the legs. Christian Eriksen, we know is never really had the, that pace. So he doesn't really have the legs in that midfield. And so I guess they, they buy Mason Mount. Who that's not really his position. And then yeah, Sofian and I mean, for, for Mason Mount, like, okay, you sign him. You think he, he could fulfill his potential. He had a couple of years ago, if you have a plan for him, but right now it doesn't look like he even has a plan for him. No, I mean, no, it doesn't. And so it goes back to not only the tactics in the game, but the tactics of the scouting these players, man. I mean, at this point, I bet Man United, they would trade Rashmus Hoyland and Mason Mount for Harry Kane. Oh, 100%. 100%. And at the beginning of this season, I'm sure Harry Kane probably would have done it if they had put in a bid for him. But they didn't even do that. So then, Could it be you know, this kind of goes back to... 
man management of Ten Hag. I was just going to say that, yeah. Could it be man management? I mean, he spent $330 million on 16 players in two years. Yeah, I see some of the names you got. Some of my, I mean, like Valdez. There are Bay some Corps, that were on Marcel loan, Sabitzer. right? Yeah. Sabitzer, Dubrovka, Butland, Veghorst, Regulon, Amrabat. But I mean, Tyrell Malassia, hardly seen him play at left back. Lissandra Martinez, when playing, looks all. I'll say he looks like a decent defender. I'm not going to give him as much credit as people think he deserves, for one. I, I don't think he deserves very much, to be honest with you. But I mean, he has been injured. But yeah, those. I mean, you look at how much money they spent, and you look at these, these lists of players. Mason Mount, Johnny Evans, Andre Anada, Rasmus Hoyland, Erickson, Casemiro. And then they signed a unproven Turkish goalie in Altai Bayandir, who apparently Andre Onana is going to go to the African Cup of Nations in January, so he's going to play. No one knows what he's going to do. See, so look at that money they spent versus, you know, you mentioned Man City earlier, man. <laughs> or even Ar- lot- like Arsenal, even. Look at the players Tottenham. Arsenal's bought over the last couple of years. Tottenham, Liverpool. Was amazing. Two straight transfer windows where they done great in Tottenham. But then it also, you look at managers, you know, like Ange Postacoglu, what he's getting out of Basuma. How much better Romero looks this season. You know, switching Son to that striker role. And so we we talked about man management. I mean, it's up to the... I guess this is another question I have. Is it up to the manager to get the best out of his players, or should players just be performing at their best no matter, you know, who's there? I, I never got this. Like I hear all the pundits say, "Oh, it's up to man- management," but as a player, for me, I always want to play the best that I can, no matter you know what role I have in the team. So I wanted your thoughts on that. I think the difference between difference between you and me and say a Anthony, we'll go with Anthony because we see his ego, right? But the his play on the field doesn't translate to it. Our egos, we, we check them at the door because, well, we don't think that we're world-class players. We know we're good, but we don't think we're world-class players. Anthony thinks we're he's good. Cristiano Ronaldo we're reincarnated. We're back in the day, yeah. <clears throat> but I mean, Anthony thinks he's Cristiano take... Ronaldo reincarnated, but he doesn't. he's not a team player. I don't think it's his – there's not a lack of skill there. It's just a lack of decision-making. That portion – is up to the manager to help the players. Better decision-making, tactical awareness, being able to coach them the right way so that way they can get they can help them be better. Ten Hag has not done that, but you're right to a certain extent. The players should be trying their hardest on the pitch, no matter if it's practice or in games, all the time. And I'll be honest with you, this Manchester United side, halftime I watch them doesn't even look like they're trying. I mean, I'll, looking, the only player I see you, trying Marcus is... Rashford. It's Rasmus Hoyland. Yeah, and it's sad because he's got so much potential. And yeah, I would love to see a good Manchester United side. The more good teams there are in the Premier League, the better it is for the rest of the Premier League. The more fun it is to watch. Watching Manchester United suck is not fun to watch. Unless you're a Manchester City fan, but they don't really have any fans. So, (laughs) I, I think we're, at least at that level, it is up to the manager. Because he can obviously see the skills and the talent a player has. But then it's up to him to put that player in a position where those skills are best used for the team. Yeah. And so I I think maybe Ten Hag isn't using some of these players in their best positions. I mean, we saw that Man City, Victor Lindelof playing left back. Johnny Evans starting, no Rafael Varane. Yeah, and he's got his two best center backs in Lindelof and Varane. Healthy. Varane played 90 minutes against Copenhagen. Tuesday to Sunday is enough time for a player of his age to recover. So that I mean, part is all. We've seen Mason Hawk. Mount. Yeah, we've seen Mason Mount play well. So, Just not for United or Chelsea last season. And so I guess what's going on there? Is that on Mason Mount? Is it Ten Hag not playing him in the right position? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go 50 50. I mean, Mason Mount's been out of form for a good portion of two years at this point. 
kind of like the Havertz situation. Eighteen at Arsenal. months. Eighteen yeah, months. Okay. Yeah. Eighteen months. But it's up to Ten Hag to have a plan with him and play him in the best positions to get the best out of him. To get him to succeed, yeah. I don't think Mason Mount has played in two successive games in the same position. I think he played the first couple and it didn't work out. <laughs> so, and it's not the position he's good at, none nonetheless. So, I, I don't understand his tactics. And then the whole Amrabat at left back never made sense to me. But we go on for hours about that. And while we're on that topic, could it be the dressing room? How about the current players? And we could start at the top of that food chain with the captain. Is Bruno Fernandez the problem? He's not a captain. You know, obviously what we see on the field, him pointing at players, throwing his hands up, complaining, whining. That's not captain material. I mean, you want a, a good captain, man. Carlos Puyol. Someone, I remember they, someone celebrating a tackle. He pulls him by the shirt, yells at him, says, you PK. get back into position. It was PK, yeah. I think I think it was PK got hit by something from a stand, and PK's kind of holding his head and about to go down, and Puyol just lifts him up and says, no, you know. Yeah, keep playing. Get yeah. back to it, man. Yeah. And so, th- th- you know, obviously that's one of the top-notch captains. You think of other great captains. You know, John Terry was another fantastic one. Roy Keane. Roy Keane, yep. Wayne Patrick Rooney. Vieira, all those. Yeah, I mean, but, you could go down the line of Manchester United great captains as well. But then if, I mean, if have one, Bruno Fernandez, Johnny Evans. Yeah, Bruno Fernandez is, if he's not the captain, who is? Casemiro? Marcus Rashford? I would not put Marcus Rashford as a captain. No. For the this way game in the Carabao the Cup, Casemiro started off with the armband yeah. and then got I, subbed I mean, off at halftime and it was given to Lindelof and then when they're three nil down, Bruno comes on and he gives it to Bruno. I, mean, I don't think there's any I mean, real leadership on that field. I, that maybe that's part of the problem. I mean, I, Casemiro maybe, Rafael Varane maybe. I mean, your default should be your goalkeeper, but you just signed Andre Onana. You can't make him the captain right away. Give it back to Harry Maguire. <laughs> Why not? Why not? They were in a better <laughs> position when he was captain, right? So it's... I I don't I agree with Roy Keane that Bruno is the last player on that squad that I would make a captain. His antics on the field literally bleed into the other players. You see the more he throws his arms up and whines and cries and flops, the more everybody else does it. So he is not in my opinion captain material and it is part of the problem. And it's going to influence, you know, young Palestri and Garnacho and Hannibal, all those players. Yeah, and you saw it in the game against Newcastle. Like Garnacho threw his arms up half the game. So, so yeah. I, I mean, let's look at the players inherited by Ten Hag, right? You got Tom Eaton, Lindelof, Maguire, Varane, Dalo, Luke Shaw, Aaron Juan Basaka. Bruno Palestri, Donny van der Beek, Scott McTominay, Martial, Rashford, Garnacho, and Sancho. Players he bought. Wood there. Bindir, Onana, Evans, Malasia, Regulon, Martinez, Amrabat, Erickson, Casemiro, Mount, Holland, and Anthony. Hoyland. Thank you. I was yeah. going through that as fast as I could. I mean... A lot Erickson of dead wasn't wood terrible. There. He was free. Casemiro, I think they spent, what, 40 and he yeah, looked at the time, fantastic it was a great last signing. season. He looked yeah. fantastic last season, so I, I don't know why he's all of a sudden regressed so much. For United to get into the Champions League last season and play as well as they did with the crop of players they have, I'll be honest with you, $40 million well spent. It was. It was yeah. 100%. Hoyland, again, at least he hustles, he tries. You can see the desire when he plays. Versus, you know, Martial, man. I was when I was watching Martial in that Carabao Cup. Oh my gosh! I remember when Arsenal were linked with him, and I was like, "Thank God they did not buy this piece of trash. He is terrible, man. He is so lazy, so lazy, so lazy." Yeah, I mean, Amrabat's looking like an okay signing. He's a little slow for the Premier League. 
He's a little slow, which is I question that signing when you have legs in Casemiro and legs in Erickson. So you're going by more heavy legs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mount's been bad. Anthony's been awful and probably the worst 85, 90 mil spent in United history. I want to ask you a question. I don't know if you know it off the top of your head, but how many goals has he scored? This season or total? Just Anthony, total. I want to say. United. I want to say five. So this season he has zero. I know that. Because so last year he Anthony's... scored. So he had four in the Prem, one yeah. in the Carabao Cup, and two in the Europa League. So I was off by two. He had seven total for United because they bought him last season. But that's in a lot of games, man. Yeah. So and zero this season, games, which is 37, more important. 40, 49 games. Yeah. And what? Like three assists? Maybe? Two. Exactly my point. So nine goal he is... contributions in 40, what did you say? 49 games? Yeah, something, something like that. that. Yeah. Whatever. I, just I mean, said, it I doesn't remember. help. It doesn't help that United's entire front line, the side, like, their entire front line wingers and strikers have literally scored one goal and one assist. And it comes from one player Marcus Marcus Rashford. Rashford. in the premier league. That is. Yeah. yeah. Like that's insane to me that that's that their entire striking line has the same stats as Kai Havertz this season. So would any of those, any Man United players get into a top six team right now? You know, you think of Chelsea, Liverpool, United, or Man City, Tottenham, Arsenal. Are you, you considering Chelsea a top six side? It's been a couple I'll, of years. I'll consider them a top <laughs> six side, yeah. I would go Liverpool, Castle, Brighton, City, Arsenal, Tottenham. I'm not missing anybody, right? Okay. Um, maybe Hoyland gets into... No. Newcastle, maybe on the bench. I don't, maybe, I don't think so, though. I don't think so either. Maybe Liverpool? Uh, Brighton, maybe. Maybe, maybe Brighton. Maybe Arsenal? The other teams, I don't, I don't think he gets in. I think at this moment in time, right now, not including potential, I think Eddie Nketi is a better striker than I think he's getting a villa. And he's yeah. a backup. That Arsenal. I think if you take his attitude and antics into account, Bruno? no. If you take that out of it, yeah, he probably gets into Liverpool, Brighton, Newcastle. And I think that's probably it. I don't. Well, you've seen you've seen what Maybe Bruno even does Arsenal. out of that number Bruno ten Odegaard, position. Declan Rice. And he's awful. So no. I don't think so. You think a fully healthy Arsenal squad, you're putting Thomas Partey there, and there's no way Bruno starts in a more of a deeper role than Thomas Partey. Rashford, when he's in form, probably quite a few teams. Yeah. But right now, I don't even know if he makes it into like a top half side. Maybe I don't think he makes it into Chelsea's side. Trying to think of the other teams that I haven't listed in the top half of the table. Brentford, I guess. <laughs> United. That's why I think he should be benched. No. Not at the moment. Villa? Yeah, so this is kind of where it comes back full circle, man, is with all the issues going up top. Yeah, you no know, direction CEO from the director of owners, football. They technically don't have that, a sporting director. The they just have a director of football. Will Jim Ratcliffe be the difference? And so where there's a wishy-washy position like that, it makes it difficult to get new players, to recruit, to make those kinds of right choices and manager. 
and it just relates to the yep. overall Seeping ownership into the roots of the club. club. I mean, you've seen the state or heard of the state of Old Trafford as well. I mean, it's one of the greatest stadiums in the world. It's supposedly the theater of dreams. It now looks, it's got overflowing toilets and stuff falling off the roof. Pretty much sums up Man United as a club. Yeah. Needs to be fixed from the inside out. Yeah. So, yeah, that brings us to the end of this episode. We hope you guys enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun covering the overall shambolic state of Manchester United. Make sure you guys are following us on our TikTok, Instagram. Join our Facebook group. Of course, check out our Redbubble cam. Get the sweet merch. On that note, we love you guys. Thank you so much. As always, cheers.